So who's doing these dialogues? No one. Well, I mean, come on. You know, I say something, you say something. Something's happening. Yeah, something's happening, but nobody's doing it. Mm. I mean, as we've talked many times before, all this stuff comes out of no place. Not just of us, but of everybody. I mean, it's not, we're not special and nothing you know, make up anything. Nobody else does either. It all comes out of everybody's space. But there are these distinct characters, right? You know, I mean, there's this, there's uh, this character, Gary. Uh, there's this character, Rich. And, like, uh, yeah, that some of the words that come out of each of them, they, you know, they resonate together, but they're distinct characters. Well, you know? clearly, you look at these two characters. They have very different, pick your word, personas, personages, personalities. And we say, well, why, where do those personalities come from? Mm. Or what's the origin of those personalities? And there's much to do made about it, this persona. And you look at Mama Maharshi and Nuzuka Dada and any one of the big teachers, and you see they're very different people. I mean, Osho was clearly different than Mama Maharshi. This could be one different. And yet, they still manifested their own way into explaining the truth. They say, well, okay, what importance does this persona have? Can we control, can we change this persona? Mama Maharshi was very adamant about the fact that your personality doesn't change. I mean, his didn't change, as you can tell. He was very young when he first started, but his personality didn't change to his lifetime, basically. He made enormous internal changes. But about the same time when Maharshi was frequenting Terrible in area, there was a kind of like a crazy wisdom guy there. Um, I can't remember now. But he would go into shops in town, just trash the shops, tear them right to the ground. Oh, his name was Keith Moon, I think. No, was the no, I think. Oh, no. <laughs> Keith Moon. No. But, uh, but he would trash parts of town. And the shopkeepers would find out that eventually, if he came and trashed their shop, their shop would prosper. <laughs> they would welcome him in. Say, come in, you know, trash my shop. They would invite him, please encourage him to trash my shop. So very different personalities. I and mean, roughly contemporary, just uh, just slightly ahead of no at the time, but totally different personalities. Yeah. And yet, also, his own brand of truth was manifesting. So this persona is something you know we get genetically, we get from our culture, from our religion, from our parents, from our friends, from our country, when we were born. And that just is what it is. It doesn't affect the truth inside. But I think people wonder about it because, uh, you know, I don't know about the uh, crazy wisdom shop crasher, mm -hmm. but the rest of them, are all at one point or another saying, look, if you follow this question, who am I? Mm -hmm. And you really follow the question, you're going to find that you're not there. Yeah. yeah. Right? So I think the, the, the question about the persistence of personality comes from this disjunction from, on the one hand, this path is all about the perception of no self. Mm -hmm. Learn to not only assert or conceptualize that there couldn't possibly be a self that is in control, mm -hmm. but to experience and perceive the absence of a self by mm -hmm. asking, when am I, mm -hmm. who am I, mm -hmm. where am I, and seeing that, like, well, these characters come up during the day, but no one of them is in control of anything, and mm -hmm. each one of them thinks that they're the only one. Uh, so there's the no self, but then there's the persistence of the personality. I think people expect that once they perceive no self, that personality itself will kind of like dwindle away and they'll become like the mimetic alloy villain in Terminator 2, right. you know, right. with devoid of any affect or response. Well, clearly that's not the case for all these teachers that you're mentioning or for any of us. But the funny thing is that people will exploit spiritual folk on the path by adopting the dress they expect, the hairdo they expect, the tone of voice they expect. It may not be that person's authentic personality, exactly. It may be a fake personality, but in fact, it's one that they can manufacture. This is like the Kumari mm -hmm. video. Like you've yeah. seen the Kumari video, where you know, a guy from New Jersey just said, I'm not going to fake this whole thing. He gets very successful. Yeah. He has followers and players yeah. on following him around. And he just mocked them. He just really yeah. came in and said, hey, I'm just pretending to be this thing. This yeah. is who I am. So it is that, that sense of there's this persona which is there, which is not part of this eye. Yeah. It's being deconstructed. People say, well, I, I do self-inquiry. I get this disappointment. I say, well, because well, you get this space. There's just a dead still space there. I say, well, that's the answer. 
you ask, where am I? And for a little bit, the brain can't find any place where it is. So there's just this quiet space where people are running around frantically trying to find something to plug into that space. Yeah, the spinning Technicolor pizza is appearing on the screen, right? Exactly. Like, yeah. Where is it? <laughs> where is I don't know. I'm looking, going, searching, right? searching. Yeah. Give me a different query. That's right, exactly. But you know, that, that still space, even a short brief one, shows us that we don't make that up. That space is there when we ask you know, a really penetrating question of the eye. Where is this eye? Well, not only that, when we experience that still space, then we experience the difference between that still space and the space where the eye thinks it knows yes. what is going on. Right. And not only is it a relief from that space where the eye thinks that it knows what's going on. If we do it enough, at first it can be, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if we do it enough, it's a relief from that ongoing wheel spinning of the eye. Um, but also over time, the eye gets start to be taken less and less seriously, which ironically, in my experience, allows the personality to actually emerge. Hmm. Because the, the personality, is the way we were talking about it, was try, constantly trying to fit itself in with what the eye thought it was, mm -hmm. as opposed to just being what it was. Like, I, I feel like one no, long, no more loses a personality after perceiving no self than one loses one's thumbs. You know, they're an attribute of us, and it's almost like prior to seeing no self, we kind of want to cover up, you know, the aspects of ourselves that we think are not compatible with the map that the eye has made of who we are. Right. We're trying to live up to an idea we right. have of who we are. Right. Well, and that, of course, that idea, of course, of who we are is not even our own. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it's important to make a distinction because there are teachers who are going around now saying body, mind, personality is that personality has exactly the same status, the same quality, the same level as body-mind. And it's not. I mean, this, this persona personality thing is an epiphenomenon. It arises out of body-mind. And the danger with this, pedagogically, is that this personality sitting off here to the side of body-mind and discrete from it, and to the same stature and level as, is a place for the eye to hide. Mm -hmm. I mean, the eye can run there and it can say, hey, look, you can't touch me. Because I'm out here by myself, I'm different, I'm just like body mind, and so you can't bother me. And where would you be without a personality? That's right, you need me, you yeah. need me. And personality doesn't go away, it isn't yeah. affected by the disappearance of the eye or appearance. Yeah. So you don't need to create a special category for it, it's just really, as I say, the eye trying to find some shelter, some shelter in the storm yeah. of this inquiry process. Well, if I remember correctly, uh, persona actually comes from the Greek word for mask. Mask. Yeah. It's really yeah. just a mask. Yeah, you hold up the mask in right. the replay and you become something, you put another mask on. Yeah. Right. So the idea that the that you know the persona is gonna disappear just because we perceive that there's really nothing behind the mask doesn't even make any sense on in that terms. That that yeah. that that precisely the capacity to wear different masks right. points to the fact right. that there is no self. Well and it's not just to to really take a slight departure. If you look at a box of puppies, mm. if you ever go to a, oh, a shelter, yeah. a box of puppies, and you look, well, they're all the same. They have no, there's no eye inside, so they all have the same personality. You say, no, I can see personalities very quickly. Sure, sure. The puppies all behave differently. You can yeah. tell the aggressive ones and the ones that are very quiet. And whatever. They all have a different personality. Mm -hmm. That's true with the birds we see outside, true with mm -hmm. all the animals. Mm -hmm. They have no eye functioning inside, yet they all have their own discrete personality. All born at the same time, same mother, same place very different personalities. Right. So it's just a true for us as just the animals. We all have different personalities. It has nothing to do with what's going on inside. So personality does not require an eye. Right. And the eye, because it doesn't exist, doesn't require a personality. There we go. That's good. It's a good summary.